Hey everyone, it is Coach Travis Robertson, and I am here with the woman on fire, the amazing Sandy McAlpine. And uh, Sandy, I am so excited to, to be interviewing you today and getting your story and having you share some of the the awesome things you guys are doing out there. So welcome to the to the show, I guess we could call today, Sandy. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. Um, so let's do this, Sandy, because I, I, I want people to know a little bit about you, where you're from, kind of what market you're in. So so tell us the name of your team and where you guys operate out of. Um, I am running the McAlpine team at Remax Executive. We are based out of Charlotte and Lake Norman, North Carolina area. Um, we cover a large area, actually. I have um, eight people on my team right now and one unlicensed assistant. And nice. in real estate, almost 20 years. Um, I've been a licensed agent for 15 and I love helping people. That's awesome. And and so 20 years in the business. So you were what, like 12, 13 when you got into the into the industry? Is that what yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like you're old enough to be have been in the business for 20 years because most people who've been in the business 20 years look like they are like 90 years old. You know, the business just tends to wear on them. But you've how long have you had a team? Let me let me start there. How long have you been running your team? I had an accidental team um, about five or six years ago. I had a baby or six years ago. Exactly. I had a, my first baby and I had overflow of business. Um, and someone had approached me and wanted to do what I was doing and wanted to learn from me. And she was able to take my overflow, which was really nice because when I did go on vacation, I had to work the whole time or, or on the leads and the deals, or I had to give um, my clients away entirely for a referral. And so we, I didn't really take vacation. Um, and then when I had my accidental team, I had two or three people join and just um, want to learn from me. And I really didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to help them other than basically do the deals with them side by side while they navigated the buyers and sellers. I started buying leads at that point, um, maybe six years ago. Uh, about four years ago, I was still doing all of my own sales, um, helping the agents that were on my team do their sales. Um, we didn't have really any accountability at the time, but I had another baby. So I had a two year old and a newborn at home. I was working 80, 90 hours a week, maybe more some weeks. I was toting the kids all over the place in the car, dropping them off at babysitters. And I mean, it was horrible. I had like 50. You know, the, the super mom sort of, <laughs> yeah, situation, yeah. Right? you know, you're like a baby on one arm, a, a toddler yeah. on the other, a listing presentation and, and driving the car. You were all over yeah, the place. Horrible. I mean, I had four closings like the first two weeks after he was born and he went to all of them and I was eating in the car, changing him in the car. But, you know, so past that, we, um, we basically, uh, they needed more training, more accountability. They wanted more leads. I just kept buying more leads. I, I invested into a better CRM, um, but I was still a little bit of a mess when it came to um, just helping them find their own business. So I, we've grown from that, obviously, and we're oh, back. We're going to kind of. We're going to walk through kind of your your growth here and the transformation of your team because during that time, I mean, how many hours were you working a week? I mean, you were you were like five a.m. to to four a.m. sort of six. Yeah, yeah. You all up all night. I mean, I breastfed both my kids until almost a year, so I was with them twenty four seven. I. I was up all night and then I would do emails at seven, eight o'clock. My husband would watch them while I took a shower. He um, was in a NASCAR industry and so he was gone 90 to 100 hours a week. So his mom helped me, my neighbors helped me. I had a, a little bit of a tribe and I literally just had to set appointments when I, I could. And, and half the time I told people, hey, I'm wearing my mom clothes, I'm wearing my yoga pants and I got my baby with me, is that okay? And everybody was really receptive. They were like, yeah, great. No problem. They knew I was a hardworking mom and they knew I knew what I was talking about. I mean, I had at that point a really nice resident, you know, real real estate resume. Um, I have a lot of designations and I've been in the business for a long time. So um, my ultimate goal is a smooth transaction for my clients. And I, I communicate a lot. 
So that's, that's what I, I think is my strong suit. Yeah. So let's talk about this. So here you are, you have this team, it's the accidental team, as you call it. <laughs> and it's, it, it's a couple of people, but in all reality, the whole idea that you originally started this team with is, oh, this will be great because it'll help save me time. Right. You know, it's going to, if I bring on other people, they're going to help. And it's not that they didn't help, but they didn't save you any time. You were still doing everything you were doing, plus deal doctoring for them, helping them get business, helping them bring things to the table. You were involved in every transaction, not just that you were doing, but that they were doing as well. So it, it got to the point where you were, you were burning out. I mean, you were just burning the candle at all ends being a, a brand new mom and you've got a husband who travels, which God bless you for doing that. Cause I always say Lisa's just a saint for, for dealing with my travel schedule. So I, I know what it's like on the husband side to, to travel and, and leave, you know, a mom home with two young kids and it's hard. And, and you guys are, are the most amazing creatures on earth. I mean, you really are. Moms are like amazing. And, and so here you are, you've got this team and they're wonderful people, but they're not saving you any time, right? And so they're taking more of your time. And it got to the point at one point, you were ready to just kind of end the team entirely and just go, you know, what? forget it. This isn't helping me. I, it's not made anything easier. I just want to quit. I want to end it. So, so what kept you from just like blowing the whole thing up and going, screw it, I'm done? Well, at, at the time, I think I was doing nine to 12 million and then all the other three people were doing 3 million total. <laughs> and so they were struggling. I was struggling to keep up for them. I, I felt like I was having to hand them deals, some of my deals, just to give them some business so that they could have make money so that they sure. could because I, I felt like we finally started going on vacation a couple years ago and I felt like I couldn't go if I didn't keep them afloat, they would leave me. So, um, I didn't know what to do and I literally was so stressed out and I had no time for hobbies. I, I was not really doing much. I didn't ever watch a lot of TV. I mean, I literally would go home, drink a glass of wine and do emails and texts until or maybe three glasses. I don't know. I was very stressed out until like 10 o'clock at night. And I was one of those moms. I mean, I love my kids, but I couldn't wait to drop my baby off at daycare. As soon as we put them in daycare, I couldn't wait. Like it was like, as soon as I dropped them off, I was like, oh, I'm free. I can tackle my 800 item to do list with all my clients, all the stuff that is necessary to finish the transactions. So that was, um, yeah, I needed, I needed something. I met you at a Remax conference yeah. two and a half years ago. And, um, that was that. Like, I just really liked you. I've been approached by a ton of coaches and they're always trying to sell me, put the hard sell on me. You didn't put the hard sell on me whatsoever. And you actually invited me to a free conference or something. And you uh, gave me a lot of tips and ideas right there at the booth. And so I was like, okay, I got to do this. And so I think right after we came back from the conference, I called and set it up. Yeah. And so, and, and so you're, you're at this point where you're like ready to just throw in the towel, be done with it. And now you've got eight people on the team, an unlike or an unlicensed and an unlicensed assistant, right? Mm -hmm. So talk about that evolution. I mean, because going from, oh my gosh, I want to quit this whole thing to eight people in a couple of years that are productive. And we're going to talk about your, your tennis playing in just a moment, because I think this is amazing because your what, what has shifted for you is so epic and, and, and it's, it's the stuff legends are made of, which is awesome. And, and we're going to talk about your, your schedule now, because I think it's fantastic. But before we do, I want to talk about the evolution of your team from a couple of people who it's just a, a hot mess. It's not working the way you want it to work to eight people. And your team's a joy for you to work with you. You've got an incredible group of people. So what was that transition like? What were, what were the, let's say, what were the three toughest challenges that you had to, to face during that transition? Um, well, since we didn't have any accountability, we didn't have any uh, regular scheduled communication. We didn't have any meetings. We half the time they didn't know how to use. I would just sign up for stuff, um, technology and new CRMs and not let anybody know what I was doing and then expect them to just jump on with it. Um, 
So really there wasn't, I was doing all this communication with the clients, but I wasn't doing any communication with my team. And we were going through admins like left and right. I wasn't hiring properly. I was just hiring any old body I could sit in a chair and hoping that I could train them. And I was looking for that part-time person, which everyone's scared to hire a full-time person. They all think they don't have the money and they want the part-time person. If you can find a part-time person that will do all the stuff that you need them to do and stay there, you tell me about them because I never found that person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so tell people like you're just going for a part-time admin. It just doesn't work like you think it's going to work because you either have somebody who never wants to go full time. And so when you finally need somebody full time, you're like, crap, I got to fire this person or I got to find another part time admin or I tried I, that too. Or I'm going to hire somebody who really wants to be full time. And so they're always going to have one foot out the door looking for a full time gig because all you're giving them is a part time option. So either way, you're, you're screwed. It's like never the right plan. Oh, yeah. And they were like, it. I mean, nothing against moms with kids and everything, but the part-time no. that wanted to work from nine to two so they could pick up their kids, they were just constantly leaving early so they could run errands and just causing me all kinds of grief and the stuff just wasn't getting done. So, I mean, I, you guys helped me hire the right way. Um, there's a whole process the way Travis teaches as far as hiring your admin. You got to, you know, interview them several times. There's lots of questions you need to be asking. Um, and then also with the evolution of the team, I just said to them, you know, I prefaced the first meeting. I said, we're going to have this meeting. I need everybody present. I need, it's very important. And I said, we're doing this coaching. I'm, I'm in the program, but we are all doing the coaching and we, you're either on board with this. We're going to make a lot of money and we're going to achieve what you want to achieve or you can leave right now, like you can exit. Like I was really freaked out and everybody said, I'm so excited, I wanna do this. And between, um, you know, my coach, I love her to death, it's all the ad ideas that she gave me, how to just um, do agendas for the meeting, keeping it clean and concise, having the meeting at the same time every two weeks, you know, making sure everybody knows the rules and regulations of being on the team. I made everyone sign an ICA with me. Independent yeah, contractor agreement for for those who are like, what's an ICA? So that's yeah, what an ICA. I'm, I'm like, people are sitting here going, what's that? So a contract between the agent and myself, everything that I'm responsible for, paying for them. Hey, Thomas. Um, everything that I am, <laughs> I'm getting like little notifications. I know, I know, it's the system. <laughs> um, everything that I expect from them. Uh, rules to stay on the team to, as far as, you know, to keep receiving leads and to keep receiving all the support that I provide. And then actually a documented list pages of support that I provide and what I pay for. Mm -hmm. So there really shouldn't be any um, confusion. They the confusion. They can't say, well, you said this, or you said you were going right. to do this, or like, it's all there black and white. It's like, this is what we agreed to. Sorry if you don't recall that, but this is this is the agreement. It just it cuts down on the the frustration, the unmet expectations. Really, truly, we both sign it and initial every yeah. page, and I yeah. keep it in a file. I did a disc profile on every person on the team and realized that I need to train differently for each person, and I need to analyze their strengths and weaknesses almost monthly. We have um, a one on one with every person on the team every month. Um, and sometimes it's weekly if that person is behind or needs help. And then the tracking, the accountability, I'd never asked anyone to, uh, to turn in anything to me or do anything to me. I just expected them to do internet leads and just assume they did it. Like I used to have to make 400 calls a week. So I'm, I'm disciplined enough myself. And I just assumed they want to be here. They're going to do it. But honestly, like everybody gets they do the abs and the flows, right? And sometimes people get off track. And I think that if someone wants to be on a team, they want someone that's going to be help hold them to a higher standard and hold them accountable. And I think the tracking has been huge, huge. Yeah, so and, and this is really important, Sandy, and I don't want people to miss this because you put in you originally you didn't have all of this accountability. You didn't have all of this stuff. And in fact, I love, I love the Shannon on your team. 
uh, just just posted this. So I'm going to share the comment here. She goes, I'm on Sandy's team. She truly gives you all the tools to succeed. And Travis is a big part. Well, thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. Um, and and uh, checks in the mail for that that comment. I really I really do appreciate that. No, so so you went from a team with really no accountability. It was kind of the wild west. To hey guys, it's structured. It's going to be run like a business. As you and I spoke about the other day, you just said I learned how to run my team like a business. So you went from wild west to independent contractor agreements and formal hiring processes and systems and and accountability. Was there anybody who fought that? Yes. Um, it was strange because I've never managed anyone. Was Shannon one of them? That's what I want to know. No, no. Shannon, Shannon's been awesome. She never, she does everything. And you know what? It shows because she, Shannon is killing it. Like she just started last year and she's killing it. So um, the folks that follow the plan and do the plan are, are just making a killing. I have one agent on my team that has over 9 million. Um, she just put in a million dollar contract this last week. So that, maybe 10 there. million for the year. So, yeah. Is it so close I mean, this year? Um, yeah, well, we're getting paid on it. I think this year, I'm not going to jinx right. it. Not going to jinx it. Not going to jinx it. So, uh, so yeah. And, and she does everything I ask her to do. She, they, the, the folks on my team that really are just don't want to disappoint me. They're my friends. I love them. We're a family. There's a couple of people on my team in the past. You know, they're my friends. I love them. They're my family, especially my family. They don't always um, do everything that I ask them to do. And they don't always follow the rules or, and sometimes the, the people that were on my team before the coaching, they weren't, a hundred percent on board for a while. They were like, Oh, this, I don't like all this. This sucks. You're actually looking at what I'm doing. Yeah. They don't like all this change because they were able to be free and just do whatever and do whatever they wanted. But the first year, um, that we were in coaching and everybody really rolled hard on everything that I rolled out. And, you know, we don't talk about this behind the scenes. All of this took a lot of extra time for me to yeah. set up. Yep. So I was working deals, closing houses and learning how to manage a business and setting up all this operating procedures and then rolling them out in all these extra meetings. So I was working double time to set it up. But what ended up happening is every person on my team closed over 5 million last year. That's incredible. We closed I mean, 24 million, I think last year. Or so, and that, awesome. was, that doubled from the previous year. Doubled. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's absolutely incredible. And so for, for people to understand, so 24 million last year was how many transactions for you guys last year? 87, 87. And, but last year, not everybody was on the team for the full year. No, we had, um, five that were on for the whole year. Right. So, so it was, it was a very productive year for you. And this year you guys are where? So we had a couple transactions roll over into this year from last year. We're so we were a little bit shy of what we wanted to do, but um, we and we're at eighty seven now closed, and we're tracking over a hundred at this point. So because yeah. we have we have the hundred, and now we just submitted some new contracts. And um, like I talked to one of my team team members, and she's working with a $4 million buyer and a two and a half million dollar buyer that want to buy this year. Love it. So Love that's it. like, you know, I just told her, I was like, that's extra. Don't count well, it. And, it. <laughs> and so, so here's what I want people to understand, because if you were to just look at the numbers, you might go, well, wait a minute. You went from five people and 87 transactions to now you've got eight people on the team. You're sitting at about 87 transactions or so, and you're gonna you'll you'll probably crest over a hundred transactions this year, which it, that's growth, and so that's great. But they might go, well, gosh, that didn't grow up as much as you might expect. But here's what I want people to understand: this has been a structurally transformative year for you, and and it's yeah. not just the income that you were after because your hours, like you said, when you started making these changes, your hours in the business went up. They didn't go down right away. People think that it's like, oh, great, I'm going to get coaching. I'm going to build a team and my hours are going to go down. Not initially. Your hours tend to go up because you've got to fix all the things that are broken. You've got to change the things that need changing and still keep the business rolling. Transformative years take more time 
initially before you really see the benefit on some of the income and the benefit on your time. But here's what I love about this. So Sandy, you went from working like seven days a week, you know, till 11, 12 o'clock at night, sometimes, sometimes later up early doing that whole thing to now you've competed just in 2018 alone. You've competed in you're a major tennis player. Like you love tennis and you and I've talked about, you know, my, my stint on the, the high school tennis team and all of that, but um, you're like actually good. I, I was just, I was like, Hey, there, he's a warm body. We can throw at this and we need somebody on a doubles team. Like let's throw Travis on there, but you're actually really good. And you've competed in what is it over 50 U S TA. So this is like a legit organization here, guys, like 50 state level competitive tournaments this year. And you practice and play like three, four eight times a week or something like that. It's like hey, you have so much free time now. So talk about it. It's true. And you know, you're laughing and you're like, oh my God, it's so true. You know how much time I take off, but you, you literally take off a ton of time and your team's crushing it. Yeah. Even my mother-in-law was yesterday was like, what? You only work 30 hours a week. No, you don't. Um, so yeah, so this year, you guys hear that 30 hours a week <laughs> roughly is what she's working right now. 30 <laughs> hours a week. So and, and your team's doing over a hundred transactions this year, most likely. They're most likely gonna eclipse the hundred mark this year. And she's yeah. doing working 30 hours a week ish and playing a crap load of tennis. So honestly, like what we had we had one team member who had a tragedy um the year before last, and it really put her out for the year. I mean it really put her down and out. So she hasn't produced this year very much, but I, I mean, I love her to death. She's coming back strong this year. Yeah. Um, we also had another person take a lot of time off from the business that needed to take the time off. And then I hired two new people um, just three weeks ago. So, yeah. so, so, so of these eight, two of them are like fresh off the boat. You know, they're, yeah, they're, 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 and then I lost a team member just recently. So I I was down for, and that team member had a really bad year as well. So I had, I was down four people. So it was the five folks and myself that did a majority of these hundred transactions. Uh, the other two people that left did 13 of those. Yeah. So you can tell, you know, if you have a team of rock stars and people that want to close over 20 transactions a year, our, our next year is going to be drastically different because I'll get, I'm, I'm so excited for your 2019 right now. I think I'm probably more excited for your 2019 than you are. Cause yeah. I know what's coming. I'm a little bit scared, but yeah, I know you are, and, uh, but I, but I know what's coming and, and cause I've seen so many leaders in your situation who've gone through this major restructure, who've set up the business to have so much more free time. And that next year it's like, phew, it just takes off and, and you're just, you're headed for, for an amazing 2019. I'm so excited for you. Well, so my sister and my mother-in-law are on the call and I know they are. They know. I, I saw it. my sister actually um, has been playing tennis since she was 16 years old. She was on the high school uh, team. She got me into tennis and she really wanted me to, um, I really wanted to play with her, but she's, she's high up there ranking. She's a four Oh, she's really good. And I was a beginner and I, we couldn't even, it wasn't even fun for her to play with me. So I was on a mission to get lessons and do clinics and try to play. And you can't get better at something like a hobby like that when you're, you know, in your forties without doing it at least three times a week. It's like golf or anything. Yeah, else. You thought you were in your thirties until you just said you were in your forties, Sandy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, the way. so, I um, made it my mission this year to instead of, I mean, obviously my income, um, my gross sales actually um, are 50% less this year. I went Your way personal down. gross sales. My personal sales went down yeah. 50% because of all my tennis playing and, and whatnot. Um, so and I'm yeah. going to dial it back a little bit, the tennis. Um, I you're okay with that. I mean, look at that. It's not like that's a bad thing. No, no. But I mean, I did, but I was, I, I set it up so that my admin and the girls on my team um, were there to help me to keep up the marketing, to keep up the communication with the clients. Um, and now since I'm treating it like a business, I'm time blocking. So with all the time blocking, I'm able to be super efficient 
where I was running like a chicken with my head cut off before. And I was running around picking up signs and lock boxes and doing all those activities, sitting in the car, driving from place to place. And obviously I'm not working as many buyers. Buyers take up a lot more time than listings. I'm, I'm mostly listings focused. Um, I would say at this point I'm 90% listings focused. So um, that took a lot of time off me. So it halved my time right there. And, and I was able to sign up for tennis sanctioned events and things like that. So I, 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 I work the morning, my time blocking is working early morning and I get up, obviously um, go to the gym at five lately and I get uh, everything knocked out of the way. And um, I go play tennis from like nine to 11, nine to 12 sometimes if we have lunch and I come back in the office and I kill it the rest of the day. So, and yeah. if there's something that still needs to be done, I mean, I go home, I cook for my family and then I, I keep working that night or whatever, but my weekends have been so freed up because of the buyers. I, yeah. I was taking buyers, you know, they want to look on the weekends and they want to look at night. So once I was able to get all the buyers off me, that freed me up for nights and weekends. Now, one of the things that I love, Sandy, and, and this is something we um, we talked about in our in one of our private member trainings, and and I just love about you. So here you are, you've got this team and you've been putting in accountability, you've been putting in systems and you know, support and one-on-ones and and more formal meetings. But it's not been like a dictatorial thing. It's not like your your team hates you or you hate your team and you run it like a you know a ruthless dictator. You do really cool things for your team members, and you've got something where you told me this the other day, and you, and and I won't I won't spoil the whole surprise. But it was something like for anybody that does three million or more, you're doing something really cool for them. Like you've put in some really cool like team. Oh yeah. Bonuses and awards and prizes. So talk about how you've kind of balanced the structure and the the accountability with some of the fun on the other side of it. So um five of the people on my team have hit over three and a half million dollars this year. So they're going, I'm taking them on a cruise in January and I'm paying for it. That's awesome. um, had, yeah. And Melissa came up with this really great idea of making like a, a poster board with the little lines going across over the year with the production, you know, with the GCI going across with like little kind of like little temperature thermometer gauge. And um, but every month I do some crazy results oriented um, like a challenge, let's say, because everyone's a little bit competitive that's on my team. And we do little challenges and I make a prize for the person that completes the challenge first. And then I give a prize to everyone who completes the challenge. So um, I really, really love that, you know, every, a lot of the girls get on board with the challenges. We have our first guy. I have a dude now. Um, you have a dude. First guy hired. Um, have a dude, I feel sorry for this guy. Yeah, no, he loves it. He's so excited. He likes. He's like, wait a minute, this is great. I get to work around, you know, eight women. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, and so we're we do, but most of my prizes are like Remax apparel. Um, you know, we have just all kinds of things, earbuds. You know, just I don't want to um, mess up the feature surprises, but we're having. Our meeting, uh, we have meetings sometimes at restaurants, we have them sometimes at the office, but we're going to have our next one, we're going to have a, a Christmas party for the team, just a personal one, and we do the white elephant gift exchange, and we just celebrate our year and have a good time. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, Steve asked a question, uh, Steve Snook here, and I think it's a really great question and it's something a lot of team leaders struggle with is getting the team to buy into the vision. And, you know, how have you gotten your team to buy into your vision? Cause you've got a clear vision for your business. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so in all of this, how have you gotten the team on board with that, that vision? So I've asked every single person on my team in their one-on-ones, what is their motivation? Why do they want to be here? Why do they become a real estate agent? And I've actually had to repeat this question and reaffirm it every year with the girls on the team and say, you know, what do you want out of this? How much money do you want to make? And as soon as I figure out what everybody needs and wants on my team, then I try to help them achieve that. So it's not like they're 
Yep. They're fighting for my vision. They're fighting for their vision. And I'm reminding them sure. of that constantly. Did you guys catch that? <laughs> Please don't like if you're taking notes, which you should be because Sandy's on fire here. So, um, did you, please write that down. They're not necessarily on board with her vision, though they are, but they're also fighting for their vision. And, and, and Zig Ziglar was the one who said it, I think, extremely well. He said, you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want in life. And, and I always, from, for our clients from stage, this is kind of what I explain. Your business is a dream machine, but it's not just a dream machine for you. It's a dream machine for everybody in your company. Your job is to understand what their dreams are and to find a way to help them achieve their dreams while you achieve yours through this vehicle that you've created, which is your business. It is a dream machine for everybody on the team. And great leaders like Sandy understand that. And that's how they're able to get the buy-in. So Sandy, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just was like, that, 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 yeah, yeah. that truth bomb was like, and I didn't want you to like run past it because you and I are, you know, we, we, we can talk for yeah. days as I think our like pre-interview went an hour and a half or whatever it was. It was nuts because you and I can talk all day, but that's huge is, is wow. you really taken an, an interest in your people and, and learned their why and learned what it is that they're after. And you've gone after helping them get that. Well, every person on my team, there's a common, there's common goals that I've seen over and over. They want more time to spend with their family. They don't want to be that 80 hours a week person. They looked at me in the past and said, Ooh, I don't want that. I want to make that money, but I don't want that. And then number two, everyone on my team wants to be able to take vacations and have all their bills paid and have a little extra, right? They're all economically driven at that point. And, but they all have different numbers, you know, yeah. they, they say, I don't care. I don't need to make a million dollars. I want to, but they, they don't want to make a million dollars. That's my goal. They want to make enough to be comfortable. And I know that number for every person on my team. And if they're getting far away from it and it's almost the end of the year, I need to help them kick it up a notch. We need to figure out how to get them to their goal. And the same goes for like number goals or volume goals or anything like that. And I mean, I obviously I do have minimums to stay on my team, but, and if they're not meeting the minimum, you know, we really got to spend some more time together. Um, but yeah, so I'm just trying to help them meet their goal so that they are feeling fulfilled at this job, because if they're going to just tank then this isn't, or if they can't be coachable or listen to what I'm having them do, because I'm, I'm, do, I'm telling them to do the things they do because it works, right. but if they can't do it, then maybe this isn't the career for them. So, so let me ask you, Sandy, for, for somebody that is starting a team or they're, they're thinking of starting a team, or maybe they have a team that is like, sucking wind and, and, you know, as I like to call them, they're just decorated garden gnomes because they actually don't do much of anything other than sit there and say they're on your team and have a business card that says I'm on your team, but you still do 90% of the production. So for, for somebody who's sitting in that situation where they want a team, they like the idea of a team, they're, they're, they're struggling to get their team going. What three pieces of advice would you give them if they're sitting in that situation right now? Well, first of all, I think a lot of teams are in, in that situation are in a office that's not supportive. If they're in an office that's not supportive and they're the whole office's production, that is a problem. So I would say get an office or a franchise or a place where that is going to be extremely supportive and provide the offices, space, whatever, internet connection, you know, everything that you need to do your business and a great office admin, you know, nice fancy copiers, because we do a lot of marketing. We, you know, we need fast internet. We need a nice location where our clients can find us. So I think big um, is your office support and who you, your, your team is lined up with for one. Number two, you need to get everybody a tracker sheet. Number one, that the tracking thing has to start day one. Like if you're suffering um, 
I have a rep at Zillow Group and I've shared a lot of my um, stuff that I've made in the past, like just random stuff. Um, and she's helping other realtors in other parts of the country because they, I, this keeps coming up. Like I have a team, I don't know what they're doing. They're not making the calls. Like, and I'm like, wow, I've been here before, you know? So I, um, the tracking is huge. And also the one-on-ones and the monthly meetings. I think the, the, the foundation of getting your message across um, and meeting with everyone individually to find out any issues before they arise. I mean, like before all this stuff, I mean, I sure, I'm sure I had gossiping going on. I had negative Nellies. I had things happening behind the scenes I didn't know about. And now that we are together all the time, I spend a lot of time with my agents. I feel like none of that is, I mean, if we squash that stuff, so. Oh yeah. You get ahead of that. You get ahead of that. So, so what would you say to the person that's on the fence about coaching or they don't know if, if coaching is right for them and they're thinking, well, you know what, I'll wait and maybe try it later. And, and let me get a few things fixed before I get into coaching. What would you say to that person? Who's, who's kind of like, does it really help? Does it really matter? And and shouldn't I wait until I get things in place first and then get coaching? What would you say to that person? I would say I was that person. And I was like, well, I saw the prices of coaching at some point. I was like, no way. You know, if I had that much money, I just buy more leads or whatever. And then I'd just be in chicken with my head cut off. And that's exactly what happened. And I finally realized, you know, I need help with this. I have a team now and I need, I don't know what, how to take this to the next level. And I would say you need to interview Travis Robertson and his team. You need to hear what they have to say, get a, get the free coaching call because they have been instrumental in all of these things that help me to set up my team in this way to where I'm not freaking out. Like I have so much less stress level about that. Um, I might have stress about other things, but um, it, and it's, and it's constantly moving. It's not something that, you know, you, you start it and you set it and it's, it's, there it is. You know, it's, I like the second year I signed up for coaching, I was like, Oh my God, there's no way I could live without my coach. Like, because every month we have new problems and new things and new challenges we face. And she fixes my mindset and I get locked back down into those, um, those mindsets where I'm, I'm starting a little freak out inside my mind. And then she talks to me and after the 45 minutes, I feel amazing and I have a new plan and it resets me and recharges me. And it's like, I, it's better than therapy. Like I tell you all the time, she's like my psychologist, Like I don't, I can talk about whatever I want to. And she just helps me fix it. And, and that's, I don't even know. I, I, I'd pay more. I, I don't, I couldn't, there's, I can't Good see. No. Hang on. Team, uh, go ahead and, and, and increase uh, Sandy's, Sandy's billing there for, for me. Would you go ahead and uh, no, but that's, it's so I great. I, mean, I book out my months. I book out my sessions like three months in advance because I want those times. Yeah, no, I and and this is the this is the cool thing, Sandy, is that most people view coaching as an expense, but it's not an expense. It's a huge investment in the business because what you've gotten back in time, in sanity, in income, in just the freedom in your business is it, uh, like you said, you'd pay more. But to me, I love hearing that because I don't want to charge you more. I, I love that that we get such, we get to have such a low relative investment to what everybody gets back in it. And, and to me, just seeing you and seeing that transformation, because I remember talking with you at that convention and I remember where you were at and you didn't have nearly the glow and the energy no. and the, the just, you know, life in you, you were like, ah, uh, you know, just blow it all up. And, you know, I mean, you were in a, you were in a rough spot. And, and yeah. so to me, it's just, it's so fun to see the success that you've had. And, and so, so I just want to say I we're up over, I knew we'd go over you and I, because I knew it. I knew it. Well, I will tell everyone this one little tidbit. We doubled our income, our sales the first year. Um, and even before I hired all these new people, because I, I'd like to make more money, obviously. Um, I personally took over another 100,000 GCI this year. So if anybody 
wants to worry about what they're spending on coaching, there you go. I could have 12 coaches or whatever, you know, I like for yeah. the money that I made. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. worth it. It's worth it. And that's just one year. And then you take 2019 and you toss that into the mix and it's going to be whew, like, God bless you. I think it's awesome. So Sandy, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you being here and for, for dropping so much truth on, on this group. And so guys, if you found this valuable, do me a favor, like comment on this and Sandy, where can people find out more? Cause you're in an area where a lot of people are moving to, especially from the People's Republic of California, where I am. Uh, you know, we're all trying to get out before the state falls off the the side of the the country, um, and or just implodes. So, for people who want to get into to your market, where do they find out more to to send you business? Um, well, they can go to mcalpineteam.com. And, and if you can't spell it, I think I bought every misspelling version and <laughs> <laughs> go daddy, but, or you can uh, go to Sandy is your And oh, that's super easy. I love that. I answer all my phone. I, There's I, a bunch I, of people I, right now going to go daddy going, Oh, that's brilliant. I got to go get like Joe is my agent, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I answer my phone. People can call me direct. Um, and like I said, I have a great team that's willing to jump, um, at the next task to go show property or go list a house. And I like, we have a lot of relocations here to Lake yeah. Norman and Charlotte from California, New York, New Jersey, mainly. So yeah, all the high tax states. Yeah. So, well, Sandy, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And um, it's just, it's awesome to see your success. And, and I just want to wish you the best 2019, a happy Thanksgiving. And yeah. I'm excited we get to partner with you into this next season. So, so thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, you guys. Bye.